Welcome to the Viking Spotlight. This is a podcast about people, events, and projects at North Canton City School District, and I'm your host, Jeff Wendorf. Today, we're talking with two Mrs. Darlene Howd and Mrs. Renee Mance. Uh, both are Mrs. Howd and Mrs. Mance are retiring this year, and the podcast is our opportunity to say thank you for all you've done for our district and our kids, and also to share some great um, uh, staff and, and great events uh, from our educators in our district. So thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's before we talk about the district, uh, why don't you take a few minutes and tell us about yourselves and uh, a little bit of uh, um, your career and, and how you're ending up here. Mrs. Mance? I am at the very tail end of 34 years in education, 19 years with North Canton City Schools. I went to Kent State University for my undergrad, and then I went to Ashland University for my graduate degree. Um, I started teaching in Georgia, and I taught second grade. After teaching for a year there, I came back home, and I taught at Lake Local Schools for a couple years, and then I moved to Green Local. And at Green Local, that's when I went through the um, my master's program and got my degree. Okay. And when I came to North Canton, um, Dr. Hascheck was my advisor, and he suggested that I go through some practice interviews before I go for the real interview to get my um, to get a principal job. So North Canton Middle School was a practice interview, and they offered me the job, huh. and I've been with North Canton ever since. That's a great practice, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah good. So. Good, good. I didn't realize you had been to the other districts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good, cool. Yeah. Mrs. Howard? Well, I'm a North Canton grad myself. And uh, I have 23 years in education and about 15 years in industry as well. And I started my teaching career at St. Paul School in North Canton and taught there for a few years before going into industry and then came back to teaching. And I've been in North Canton for the past 20 years in uh, working as a teacher in grades five, seven, eight, teaching science, and then um moved into administration about nine years ago, uh, completed my master's while my kids were finishing up school here in North Canton. And uh, as they were getting ready to move on and go to college, I wanted to get my master's out of the way first and um, be able to move into administration. So uh, that's kind of my path to... So you were in teaching, then went private sector, and then back to teaching. I did. Well, while we've got you on the mic there, what what encouraged you to go into education in the first place? You know, I was not thinking about education at all when I graduated um, from high school. I uh, came to North Canton just the last couple years. Uh, I think I came in as a sophomore. And... um, it really wasn't the direction I was thinking about. And I really don't think I felt that I was, um, you know, capable of being an educator mm. <laughs> at the time. I don't really think I looked at myself as someone who could educate others. I didn't have that kind of confidence in myself. But I had a great experience in North Canton when I moved here. And my experience really, um, I think, changed a lot of things for me um, in terms of uh, maybe understanding a little bit more about the value of education. And so I think that, you know, I really looked up to those educators that, you know, I I saw here. And I don't think I ever thought that I would live up to their standards whatsoever. So uh, it was actually a couple years into college when I started to consider that path and change majors about halfway through. So um, I think for me, I started to realize that maybe, you know, I built that confidence up. And uh, but even at that time, I don't know that I ever thought I would be able to teach in North Canton. You yeah. know, and I always held it in such high esteem. So uh, neat, it was neat. really... A, so I assume you were a science undergrad initially and then changed to science education. Right. Yeah. 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 And decided to stay with elementary rather than high school. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, always middle school was really my wheelhouse. Right. So, yeah. Right. Renee, you were, uh, sounds like from the get-go in education primary education? Absolutely. I came from a family of educators. Uh, My dad was a superintendent um, up in Kenston, Chagrin Falls area. My uncle, my sister, my brother were, it's through and through, it's in my blood. And when you are raised that way, and when you're little, and you go to work with dad, and you help with grade papers and all that, you know, I I love it. Family business. Absolutely. I've always loved school. I've always been real active and passionate about education. So yeah. 
Good, good. That's neat to see that too. Mm-hmm. The legacy, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Good, good. Well, we had some first year teachers on a few weeks ago. We invited three of our, our new hires, um, not new a year ago, and they came in and talked about their first year of teaching at, at North Canton. And some were, um, new to education right out of college. And, uh, uh, Mr. McKelly was, uh, a career, um, in, in other areas and then changed to education. But, uh, tell us about your first year of education as a teacher, as you can remember it. Well, how, how different of a world is it today? <laughs> well, I hope and pray that our teachers at North Canton don't experience their first year does not equal mine. Um, I started, I graduated in December and I had a job right away in Georgia. Mm-hmm. So my job was at Snellville City School in Georgia, and I had a second grade classroom. Second grade was too full at the time, so all the teachers were asked to skim a couple students off the top, make a classroom <laughs> uh-huh, of 18, I know where you're 19 going. You didn't students. get the best, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. And I'm in a trailer, and I walked in, and it was chaos from the get-go, and I made the best of it. Um, obviously, you know, when I walked out the door, I learned a lot. I grew a lot and I knew a lot about what never to do to first year teachers. <laughs> Interesting. So. <laughs> wow. And things have been best, better since then. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Good, good. Live and, and learn and, and grow. And you kept going back. And I, awesome. I, yep. Sure. Never yeah. stopped me. Good. How about your first year, darling? So my first year was teaching sixth, seventh and eighth grade science at St. Paul school. And I think I taught art, and maybe music as well. At some point in there, I taught both of those courses as well, having no idea really what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, it was a great experience, uh, you know, not quite like Renee's experience. <laughs> of, I had a classroom and uh, some great colleagues and a great mentor who really helped me out. And uh, so it was a pretty traditional, normal experience. And yeah. uh so Good. felt and really how, well how many years were you there? Three? Just three. Three years, yeah. Okay. And then I was uh, working at night uh, for um, Canton City Schools in adult basic education yeah, okay. at the same time and um, just trying to make ends meet. And yeah. so that was how I ended up in industry as I started working with adults in some of our local businesses. Okay. And yeah. found my way into industry, kind sure. of thinking, oh, I'll do this a year or two. But it stretched out a little bit longer right. and I was really glad to get back to education to finish my career. Neat, neat. So you both uh, primarily have been at the um, middle school and the intermediate a little bit early on, on the um, elementary side, Renee, it sounds like. And, but uh, why administration? And some would ask why administration at the middle school? When I was teaching, especially when I moved to green uh, middle school, I taught seventh and eighth grade. I always found myself problem solving, looking at a situation. What would I change if this were my building? What would I do differently? How would I make it better? Um, So then I kind of reflected upon that. And I thought, you know, if I want to make a difference, I'm more of a doer than a watcher. I need to move in that direction and become an administrator and be able to make a difference. And if I have these ideas, I'll have the opportunity to implement them. And then if they're not successful, then I can reflect upon myself and continue that passion sure. to do the, you know, make, make the best building, have the best teachers, do what's best for students at all time. Good. Darlene? Uh, I think that for me, I had a lot of administrative background in industry. And um, when I came back to teaching, I really just wanted to teach. And I did that for 11 years here. Loved every single minute of it. Um, and then after I started thinking about it. I thought it would be a different way to contribute. Uh, There are different things that you can do as an administrator than when you're tied up in a classroom all day. And I felt like um, I had uh, some things that I wanted to do um, to support kids and families in a different way. And uh, I felt confident enough to do that. Um, And you know, I've always missed the classroom as much as I loved it every day. I've missed it every day, too. But I felt like it was a path that I wanted to take. And um, I, I just thought it was important to serve in that way. Yeah. Neat. Good. Well, what? Th- tell me something about the, your experience in education that's been the most rewarding. What? what do you, as you look back and you're getting ready to start a new venture and uh, uh, of your choice, obviously. And what? Uh, what's been the, the kind of the 
that yeah, I'm 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 proud of that. What 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 do you see after a long career? Oh, without a doubt, it was the National Blue Ribbon yeah. Award for for me at Orchard Hill. That was. Um, one of the greatest moments of my life, aside from the birth of my children. I think that's right up there with that. <laughs> yeah. I just, it was, um, I was so proud, so proud of my staff, students. It was just, um, words can't even express how I felt in Washington, D.C. on that day to receive yeah. the, the award. Yeah, that's, so. that was in 2017, 2017, right? yep. yes. Yep, good, Correct. good. Yep. Yeah, but, congratulations. Well, thank you very that, much. That's a neat thank thing. You. And uh, yeah, Darlene. Well, that was an incredible achievement. And, you know, moving into the building after Renee left, um, the one thing I can say is that I think that by the, going through that process with the teachers, she really built, built a sense of efficacy within the teachers. Um, I think that they knew they were doing things the way they needed to be done. And I think that's continued while I've been there. And I, I don't take any credit for that. I think that was what Renee did to build that community within the school. And it's, it's very clear. It was a, uh, very clear to me the day I walked in. And, um, so I commend her on that and oh, I'm very proud you. to serve in a blue ribbon school, even though yeah. I wasn't there when it all happened. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but for me, I, um, I had a great experience in my first three years of teaching and this will just be a, an experience really with one student who, uh, was really struggling a little bit in uh, just personal things in his life. And uh, we ended up doing a science fair project, and it was something he was really passionate about. And it was kind of a, uh, he wanted to work with endangered animals, and you know, it's kind of hard to do in a science fair project. And we found a way for him to do that, and this kid just took off with it and ran with it. And, uh, you know, long story short, we ended up in the White House with President Bush back in 1990, uh, where he received a, an award for the work that he had done. And we spent three or four days in Washington and met all kinds of people. And um, for me, just watching this child who really had had a pretty tough situation handed to him uh, personally, and then seeing how that experience in school can really make a difference you know i'm sure that it changed his life um yeah to be you know a young man walking into the white house to have the president speak to you That's about your cool. project so and i think yeah, that especially from a, a science fair project right yeah. you, uh, all i can think of is my science <laughs> yeah. fair projects were a trifold board yeah. and some yeah yeah, yeah i mean this kid, was, <laughs> this kid was doing all kinds of things and um you know he went on to become an environmental um uh uh, not an environmental biologist, a uh, journalist, an environmental yeah. journalist, and I, I've lost track of him over the years. But yeah. you know, I just I think that that inspired me to realize that you know we can make a huge difference with just a little bit of effort, sure. and uh, can really you know uh, make a difference for a child. Right. And uh, you know he did all the work; he just needed a little bit of a sure. you know hand in doing it. So I always think of that story. Cool. I was very proud of him. Yeah, neat. Well, you've both had some exciting careers and, and touched a lot of lives and, and influenced a lot of kids. And kids are fun. They're a blast. And um, when you put, a um, you know, 300 or 900 of them together in a building, a lot of funny things happen. Any funny stories you have to share? <laughs> we were reflecting upon this question. Most stories we can't, we cannot yeah. share. <laughs> well, just don't share the names, right? <laughs> I would say for myself, um, I have over the 20 years uh, put many people in costumes. I, uh, I've done a lot of, <laughs> I, I love to sew and I've done a lot of work with theater costuming. And uh, so I have oftentimes subjected my colleagues to my costumes and, uh, you know, can think of uh, Chris Marshall at the middle school who we paraded around the school as the Grinch. And oh, uh, wow. every time we put that costume on him, he became very Grinchy and, and ornery. <laughs> and uh, my Mrs. Plenovich, the school secretary, I turned into her into Queen Amidala and, uh, you know, the list goes on and on of uh, the costumes that I've subjected people to, and we've always oh, fun. had fun with that. So yeah. I will miss that part of, I'm sure. of uh, well, my I'm work. Well, I'm sure you're welcome back anytime to share <laughs> the costumes, just not one for me. <laughs> That's awesome. I have enjoyed those costumes. The Grinch was a lot of fun. Um, one funny memory, um, Jamie Brennan and I, guidance counselor, we were at Camp Wyano, and we decided to go off the beaten path because we were going to take a, a quicker route, or so we thought. So you have your administrator and your guidance counselor at Camp Wyanoa literally lost in the woods, 
and hoping that we are <laughs> going to find our way out before we have to call for our way out. We're going under fences, around barbed wire. It was, we were laughing hysterically and it was just, we, the memory stays between the two of us a lot. Uh, often we laugh and we um, just prayed that we didn't cover ourselves with poison <laughs> ivy that day, but we did find our way out. And when we, you know, arrived, we acted like, oh, no big deal. It's all good. Nothing, nothing bad happened. <laughs> yeah. We weren't scared to death, but it, it was pretty funny. But you have that between your, the two of oh, you. Oh yeah. Share. Well, between yeah. everybody now, but it was a lot of fun, right. but it was definitely a good laugh that we'll continue to have forever. Yep, that does good. remind me of a trip to uh, Washington, D.C. one year, and we had a tour guide that turned the wrong direction, and we were looking for the Pentagon, of all things, you know, <laughs> the largest building in the world, probably, yeah. and we could not find the Pentagon. <laughs> and we were walking and walking and walking, and finally someone, you know, we were in a, a next to a highway with cars flying by uh, us with a bunch w- of eighth graders, you know. where the Pentagon is, and, yeah. You know, <laughs> we could not find the Pentagon with our tour guide. And I remember it was probably two or three extra miles of walking, and the kids were, you know, furious. And it was, uh, but we all laughed pretty hard. <laughs> Those Washington, D.C. trips were always fun. Well, that's what I was going to mention. You mentioned Camp Wainoa and the Washington, D.C. trip. And, you know, of all the things our kids and I remember, and probably most people remember, is not what they learned in math class on Friday, but in how they um, felt when somebody treated them well, where they laughed or, or had a learning situation, sometimes outside the classroom. Those class trips are very meaningful for kids that have never been away. Um, most of our kids probably have never really been to Washington, D.C. before their trips and Camp Wainoa, and it's changed over the years. We used to do it overnight and right. those kind of things, but those are things that make um, educators special in the lives of people and uh, knowing how they felt when they were treated well. And um, I know you guys in your career have treated a lot of kids very, very well, and uh, they're better for that and having you in their lives. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else you want to share about uh, your career or what you have planned next? Any great excitement? Any great trips? I know, Darlene, you travel a lot, uh, and Renee, you you travel south a lot. (laughs) Well, Darlene has, I'll let you go first. You have a whole... Well, actually, we have a trip together. We are. Oh, do you? We're traveling together. We're going to Alaska. Oh, great. And uh, this summer... And uh, then, uh, yeah, I have some other uh, trips planned with my husband and uh, looking forward to that. We do enjoy traveling. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what's next after that, yeah. but um, I, uh, I guess one step at a time for yeah. me. I'm kind of on the same path. I want to travel. I enjoy traveling, have some trips. Um, June is Tennessee. July is Florida. August is Alaska. And then... Um, Take it from there. I think of us while you're in Alaska. <laughs> we're here planning for. <laughs> we're back at it. Yeah, it's just all about new life experiences, yeah. new journeys, and just you know being very thankful for the 34 years in education, mm-hmm. blessed with my health, my yeah. children, and now it's time to just. Yeah, and you have time yeah. and freedom to see your family and mm-hmm. your kids when you want to. Yeah, that's the the calendar becomes mm-hmm. yours, not the schools, right? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, good for you, and thank you so much for your service and what you've done for for North Canton and what you've done especially for our kids and, and the staff that you led and, and uh, all that you've done for them. So we thank you very, very much, and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. And this is, I appreciate folks joining us today to uh, talk to our our folks that we care about so much and and we wish well as they move on. But uh, thank you for listening today. And if you have any suggestions for future topics, make sure and email us at vikingspotlight at northcantonschools.org and we'll make sure to share your thoughts and and, uh, try to improve our podcast a little bit here. So um, keep an eye on website and um, our Viking Vision and all of our social media to keep up on end of year events here coming up in the next couple weeks but uh, we appreciate you listening and go vikings